I love Halo. In fact, Combat Evolved is one of the reasons why I game. <clears throat> of the series, the first game will always be my favorite. Many people believe which Halo is your favorite is dependent on when you got into the series. But I would definitely disagree, for at least myself. The first game was, as writer, director of cinematics, and all-around thirsty grunt, Joseph Statens has said, the story between you and your environment. What does that mean? As should be clear from my overuse of the word, my aim for all art is quintessence. It has to feel like the perfect form, the paragon, if you will, of something. That is what will make me unquestioningly enjoy the work forever. Independence Day is a quintessential disaster film three-act structure, but superimposed on an alien invasion story. We Were Soldiers is a quintessential war film, featuring the formation and training of the star unit, their arrival to war, their baptism, and their return. Dawn of the Dead is the quintessential zombie movie, the intuitive analog of the zombies to the mall shoppers at the start of the indoor mall craze, the slow deterioration of society as seen in newscasts, and the unceasing depression caused by the collapse of the party just as they have secured their shelter. Halo is quintessential too. For every art critic on YouTube, there is a way to break down the trilogy. In the end, they are all recastings of the three-act structure. Naturally, I have my own such breakdown. The exploration, the journey, and the battle. In the first piece, we are invited to explore the setting, to become immersed in the secondary world and our cast of characters, and to imagine what preceded and what will follow. To my mind, always the purest chapter. Then you take your characters and the audience on a wild romp across the entire setting, introducing new characters, mysteries, and background information, and bringing depth to the ensemble already introduced. The easiest part of the trilogy to do. Yes, you are expanding the setting and beginning to answer the questions that the audience had answered in their mind, but so long as you don't veer too far off of their desires and have them fall off the carriage... Uh, wagon. The expression is fall off the wagon. <clears throat> there is no expectation of providing a real opening or closure. And finally, the battle. In this chapter, the focus will be on, well, uh, <laughs> finishing the fight. By this point, the writer has likely run out of steam, and the muses carried them off on their own emotional journey, making it really hard to maintain or remember the payoffs the exploration chapter has set up. The tone might have evolved to be unrecognizable from where we began, and catharsis will most likely not keep the audience in love past initial consumption. While this is by no means saying that it, the third chapter will be objectively bad, it will be unlikely to maintain a sterling reputation upon revisits relative to the previous acts. Does Halo fall into this pattern? Oh, absolutely. Maybe it would have had the ability to expand beyond it with entries taking place before or after the core trilogy. But it's just such a damn shame no one ever did keep the series going. Oh, thank you for the MCC though, 343 Industries. I'm not even being sarcastic. Having the Bungie games on PC with co-op was the best gift you've ever given me since Combat Evolved Anniversary. Oh, and I guess that weird, mediocre fan game was a nice free bonus, too. Anyways, as I said, my favorite chapter of any trilogy is always the exploration. Which is why I say that, for me, Halo isn't just my favorite because it was my first. It is my favorite because I love the exploration. When the secondary world is new, fresh, mysterious, and all its questions can be filled with whatever my crazy mind comes up with. Exploration requires a certain tone to pull off. It's always, for lack of a better term, the most self-serious chapter in a trilogy. That tone where I can feel everything around it, but if I turn to look at it, it's gone.
pulls me in every time. Bungie knew this. Their instructions to the composer, Senpai Marty O'Donnell, for the very first piece of music composed for the game was for it to be ancient, mysterious, and epic. And boy, did he pull it off. There is nothing like booting up to that menu to hear those monks chanting. That menu matters. Showing the ring world first thing, with its theme, then the theme of the humans, and the covenant, and then the flood, begins the process of bringing you into that world. The halo itself is a character. That is a key part of what makes the exploration chapter work. The world, at this point, is as much a character as the named cast. This, by the way, is part of the reason that the reuse of geometry from the first half of the game during the second half is actually a positive, but we'll get to that later. Halo is the perfect kind of game to do this. Its sandbox, almost quasi-open world nature meant that unlike games like Modern Warfare, where you were continually pushed forward and away from what you could see around you, in Combat Evolved, you were always stopping to engage with the ring. At the very least, you had a moment to stop and look around, and imbibe the beauty Bungie created all around you. I mean, DAMN! This was a time when game artists knew how to draw skyboxes. Add to this the fact that Halo contained what could possibly be the very first true outdoors, as opposed to outdoor doors, seen in any FPS. For once, it didn't feel like we were in the geometry of a hallway trying to create the illusion of open space. It felt like true open-air levels. This was especially true in the Halo and Silent Cartographer levels. Finally, the story acted as just as much discovery and exploration as the gameplay and aesthetics. There is definitely this discovering the new world aspect to the narrative. Marooned on Halo's surface, you and the crew of the Pillar of Autumn explore and claim this abandoned megastructure for humanity. Fighting a guerrilla war against an undaunted foe, you slowly discover the grand skill, identity, and finally tragic end of the builders of this ring world. At the halfway point, you get to have the mystery of what is this world really about answered as the war of religious extermination, quite timely for the game's release, pales in comparison to the existential threat of the crawling, glowing, babbling, irresistible death that is the Flood. In this way, more questions are asked, while the eulogiac, deadly curiosity of what happened to those that built the Ring is finally answered. But, like all good explorations, these answers are in very broad strokes, with 343 Guilty Spark's statements being concrete but sparse enough to allow the audience to fill in the blanks themselves. Not like wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, fill in, mind you, but more like guessing the skeleton that would be needed to hold up the curtain wall of the skyscraper before you. It also doesn't hurt, in my mind, that as we had no idea of the Grave Mind's existence yet, I was able to view the Flood as being a feral, mindless horde without a governing intelligence. Something I feel is much more terrifying than an enemy whose head exists and can be cut off. This difference of opinion, along with the portion of the fan base who would have preferred the Covenant remained the other, would eventually cause the retroactive tonal shift in how the writers and the fans saw the series differently as a whole. And so, these three aspects all coalesce. The slow, discretionary, exploratory gameplay. The beautiful, eye-catching graphics and emotionally stirring music. And that narrative journey of discovery, righteous struggle, and cosmic horror. All combined together to create that sense of exploring a world which is both new to us, but also has some terrible mystery. That time spent going through Halo and claiming it for ourselves before discovering that the Flood would take it from us and destroy everything we gazed at with wonder, is what really makes the emotional equity, as Marty O'Donnell described it, work. It's why we know the Flood are a serious threat, as we see them tear through a Covenant capital ship in Keys. It's why my heart is moved every time I hear, under cover of night, for the second time, as we emerge into the great battle between the Flood and the Covenant in the Control Room Valley on Two Betrayals. 
It's why we feel that sense of loss when we land back on the consumed and destroyed pillar of autumn during the Maw. Those feelings of loss cannot be experienced without the contrasting joy of the initial levels. Something about seeing the ring, about gaining those small victories for the human survival, about the way the music plays to our progress, brings warm feelings to my heart. Maybe it's because the first time I played the game was in co-op. Maybe it touched me the way other specific aesthetics touched me. But I really do think that it is the beauty of the nature in the outdoor levels and that deep breathing you hear in the circular rooms of Assault on the Control Room, begging me to slow down, to breathe with them. Combat Evolve's downtime was perfect. I never felt like it took me too long to cross terrain, but the time spent on it made me just want to live in those green redwood cliffs. It didn't hurt that silent cartographer truly felt like a real place, with two ways around that island. And Assault on the Control Room featured everything the sandbox had to show, being just about as long as the level could be before overstaying its welcome, and offering the opportunity to prove that you understood the systems enough to get to fly early and cut out a chunk of the final encounters. That joy would be in the back of my mind as I trekked backwards through two betrayals. The nighttime scene making it extra clear that my gains were for naught. That death was seizing the terrain, and the honorable combat with the elites would occur there no more. Only the babbling dead. That's a sense of place unheard of in video games, outside the best RPGs. Even Halo's sequels were unable to match that feeling, with Halo 3 at best, seizing on the emotional equity of rebuilding the ring world in a new generation of graphics and using daytime to recall that joy, while still pushing me forward with only precious moments to pause in my memories. This is why Combat Evolved is such a perfect exploratory chapter. This is why it is always as cozy as home and will remain my favorite video game of all time. So to you I suggest, slow down. Take stock of the beauty around you. American Independence Day has just passed. Take a moment to remember and appreciate the joy our beautiful country inspired in your youth. For the truth is that the joy of exploration must always give way to the growth of the journey and the strife of the battle. Draw on the wonder and awe of discovery, lest the next time you set foot on your old fields of joy you do so to sing the eulogy of your golden times. Does that make sense? Or do you still think I only care so much for Halo because it came out when I was at an impressionable age? Let me know in the comments down below. Next week, we shall walk the scarred winter of Armageddon in Metro 2033. If you want to hear more of this type of analysis, subscribe or click the link to watch me discuss the Paragon Masculine story within How to Train Your Dragon. And as always, like the video, share with your battle buddies, and have a great day.